Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at a couple of new cars which have gone and been revealed for that upcoming celebrations expansion. Of course, in Japan, it's called something a bit different. I think it's literally just called the 25th Anniversary Collection. Over here, it's called Celebration. Whatever it's called, there are a couple of new cards that we need to have a little bit of a look at. And I, for one, am pretty gosh darned delighted. So I suppose we should probably start off with the shinier of them. And that is Shining Magic Art. And a fun little tidbit here from the lovely Antoine Boulet who did tweet out. The official site has confirmed that Shining Magic Art is indeed the first Pokemon. And then added, you know, some people debate that it's Gyarados, but come on. And I think that is an absolutely fair point. Like, who's actually seriously debating that Shining Gyarados came before Shining Magic Art? I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen basic evolution lines here now this is of course a reprint from neo revelation and of course the the, the the reason people argue it's sometimes shining gyarados is because technically in that set shining gyarados was card 65 and shining magikarp was card 64 but again who's arguing that gyarados comes before magikarp yes i know chronologically in the set blah 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 but come on ladies and gentlemen Come on. So anyway, yeah, Shining Magikarp is back, and I, for one, I I'm pretty happy about this, if I'm honest with you. Obviously, we are getting these new cards, which aren't really new cards. They are reprints of old cards in this fancy 25th style. So you can add this to the list. We've previously seen the base set Venusaur getting a fancy reprint, and we've seen Birthday Pikachu getting a fancy reprint, and Imposter Professor Oak getting a lovely shiny fancy reprint. You can add this one in here as well. And this is an iconic card. Shining Magikarp is an absolutely iconic card. And I 100% agree with Pokemon's decision to reprint Shining Magikarp here rather than Shining Gyarados. Because honestly, and I cannot be the only person that thinks this... This is a far more iconic car than Shining Gyarados. Shining Gyarados is awesome, no arguments here. But Shining Magikarp is just cooler and more iconic. Now, what is interesting, of course, is this is the very first time, that is to say Neo Revelation, back in November 2000 for Japan, September 2001 for us. So quite a big gap between when they got it and when we got it. This was the very first time that Shining Pokemon were introduced into the Pokemon TCG. So to bring back what is clearly the first Shining Pokemon and one of the most iconic among them makes absolute perfect sense. In terms of the card itself, I mean, do remember these don't have regulation marks. They are not legal for tournament play. They're just here for funsies. But it's not a good card, right? For one water energy, your opponent may draw two cards. Either way, you may draw two cards. And for one psychic energy, search your deck for a card named Gyarados, Dark Gyarados, or Shining Gyarados, and put it into your hand. Of course... Shining Gyarados wouldn't be there, because that one's not being reprinted. Shining Gyarados, incidentally, was a basic Pokemon, which was kind of cool. But, yeah, it, it's not a good card, but it's a fun card. Now, remember that over in Japan, they are getting a different set for these extra cards. These 25 cards do come in an extra set, so it ain't like normal, and every time you buy yourself four packs of the main set in Japan, you get yourself one packet of this, and it is just a one-card booster. So that's pretty gosh darned awesome. Over here, it's actually going to be easier to get hold of these cards. These cards are just going to be inserted into regular packs of celebrations. Though, obviously, without the set being out, we have no way of knowing what the pull rates for this are actually going to be. They could be anything, basically. So we have absolutely no idea. We will find out when the set comes out, starts being opened, all fun things of that nature. The point here is that it's a special card... And it's really cool, and I am delighted. 
But if you're looking for a regular card, well, good news, ladies and gentlemen, there is a regular card coming as well. It's a new Lugia card. And this is in the main set, both over in Japan and the main celebration set over here. And it is a new card that does have a regulation mark. So, and it is actually regulation mark E. Somebody pointed out to me, I forget who it was, I'm really sorry. But somebody pointed out to me that Arceus V promo I showed you the other day. I think that is the first card we've seen that actually has a regulation mark of F. But Celebrations, or the equivalent thereof in Japan, is still rocking regulation mark E. Which is important because E will rotate out a year before F. Brand new card with regulation marks. It's legal for tournament play, etc. Is it any good? It actually kind of is. You see, 130 HP. We've seen a lot of 120, 130 Pokemon. 130 is good. It's little things like Rapid Strike Urshifu not being able to get a one-hit KO on you on the bench. Things of that nature. So 130 is a good number of HP. Plus, you've got that resistance to fighting, which is pretty gosh darn nice. And the weakness to lightning, we'll see how good Flaffy ends up being, of course. Because Flaffy is going to make these lightning decks way better moving forward. And if Flaffy ends up being a good card, as it very well could be, then lightning decks are going to come back and this is going to be a bad weakness. Otherwise, you will probably be okay. So what we got here are two attacks. The first one for two colorless energy does 20 damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. And at this stage, if you've been playing the game for a little while, you are probably getting flashbacks. You're going to be getting flashbacks to Mewtwo. This is Mewtwo. This is Mewtwo when it first came around as an EX and completely and utterly changed the game overnight. Except we're not in the same format now that we were in when that Mewtwo came out. Now, don't get me wrong, that Mewtwo will go down as one of the best and most iconic cards probably ever, but it's not quite the same. The fact is, back then, 180 was about as high as HP got. Nowadays, we're going, you know, things like Eternus has have 340 when they get to their V Max, which is pretty gosh darn high. And it's just not the same, I'm afraid. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still a really nice attack. You can still absolutely punish your opponent for attaching too much energy. And with this being a non-rule box Pokemon, twin energy will come in very nicely here. That's going to be in the format for another year. So I do like this. If your opponent attaches too much energy, use this to punish them. But whereas Mewtwo, you could get some really nice big one-hit KOs, I rather suspect with Lugia, it's going to be the odd KO here and there, or decent damage. You're not going to be pulling off giant one-hit KOs of Lugia too often. And there are plenty of tricks you can use here. Cherim, in a grass deck, can accelerate a whole bunch of energy to you. Or Frostmoth, in a water deck can do the same thing. Now, I'm only joking. Frostmoth only attaches to water Pokemon, which is actually kind of sad. But Cherim will totally work for grass Pokemon. And Bronzong will work for metal Pokemon because you can move the energy around. And this is actually a sneaky good tech in metal decks. And we saw similar things with Mewtwo back in the day in, for instance, Aromatis decks that could do the same thing with Fairy Energy. And the theory is you play your game out like normal, you've got your energy spread around the field, and then at some point, the combination of how much energy you've got on the field and how much energy your opponent's got on their active, that they come together beautifully, you move all your energy over to Lugia, and then take a giant one-hit KO. And if you time it right... You can get a giant one-hit KO in a situation where your opponent just isn't able to get a return KO. And then you sweep for the win with Lugia. Lugia is not Mewtwo. Because you're not hitting anything for weakness as a colorless Pokemon. And because HPs are so much higher now than they were. But you've still got all those tricks like Twin Energy, Cherim, Bronzong, etc. I'm not saying it is Mewtwo. But I am saying that although it's a fairly significantly worse version, there are definitely decks that are going to want to play this. And certainly if I'm playing a Bronzong deck, I'm putting one of these in all day long. 
And we did hear that these 25th anniversary cards are going to be spiritual reprints of older cards. And in the same way, the Mew we looked at before is blatantly a spiritual successor to the Jirachi from Steam Up. This is blatantly a spiritual successor to the Mewtwo from Next Destinies. And to be honest, the second attack ain't bad either. 4 energy, 160, can't attack next turn. And the thing is, 160 is actually kind of a rubbish amount of damage. Because like I've said, 130 will get you the majority of single prize Pokemon. And then really after that, you want to get up to 180 so you can get stuff like Crobat and Krikatune. And if we're hitting 170, then we can start adding a Vitality Band and start getting a KO in that regard. But we're not hitting 170, we're hitting 160, and I fear we're just going to be a tiny bit short. And sure, you can start playing around with Galarian, Zigzagoon, and maybe even Scoop up there, but we're getting into slightly silly territory there. We've still got all the same tricks we had for energy a moment ago, and I don't think this is a bad attack, but the fact that you're having to jump through a bunch of hoops just to get one hit KOs on Pokemon V is going to be a little bit of a pain. What I will say is powerful colorless energy is a thing, and if you're willing to play powerful colorless energy, then you do go up to 180, and you get the KO on stuff like Crobat, like Krikatune, and that makes a big difference. Of course, then you need to be playing powerful colorless energy with Grass in a Cherim deck or with Metal in a Bronzong deck. And then if you're just playing Lugia as a tech for the odd situation here and there, you get into some awkwardness because how many powerful colorless energy do you play and are you going to have it at the right time? And on the one hand, playing a powerful colorless energy seems like a decent idea. And on the other hand, if you're playing Lugia, you're probably playing it as a tech. And then you're in that awkward situation where you don't really know where to fit it in and how much powerful colorless energy to play. And are you going to draw it at the right time? And it just gets a little bit awkward. I'm still giving this card four wassies because in some decks, it is going to be great. And certainly, if I'm playing a Bronzong deck, I'm playing a Lugia. Because there are going to be games where you get 8, 9 energy on the field and your opponent attaches a few energy to their active and you can take that last one big KO when you're struggling to do that much damage with anything else. It's an occasional tech, but it's a fun one. It is Mewtwo, but it's not Mewtwo. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.